I'm interested in Alan Quinlan's thoughts on this. Morning, Quinny. Quinny in a cold shower, eh? Well, I'm used to I, loads of ice baths when we were playing, so uh, yeah, I wouldn't be a I wouldn't be a cold shower man. On occasions, if I if it's warm in the summer and uh, I do a bit of a workout, yeah, I would jump under a cold shower. But Adrian's right about the benefits of it. I know some people who do have cold showers fairly regularly. It's the way forward, Quinny. It's hard to know where, it's hard to know where, back where else we can go with this conversation. Ed's is going to report back to us in a week after he's given it a I go. will. I will. Uh, most definitely. Uh, so. Ma- ma- uh, Maybe the Irish team should have had a cold shower before the game. Segue, I like it, I like it. <laughs> uh, why should they have had a cold shower, Quinny? What were your thoughts on the performance? <laughs> um, yeah, it was. Look, I think it was. Uh, it was. It was pretty flat. Um, Fiji obviously made it difficult for Ireland, but um, a lot of mistakes. And I wouldn't get over overly negative on it, um, even though you. I. It's. It, it wasn't. It wasn't kind of one of those ones. Maybe everybody went to the Aviva on Saturday expecting kind of a one-sided, high-scoring performance from the Irish team. But um, I think, uh, you know, the last time we played them in 2017, we only won by three points, 23-20. And um, maybe the expectation has gone pretty high again. So um, just I think the nature of the game for both sides, we, we saw glimpses of Fiji's outstanding brilliance and what they can do. Uh, particularly for, with that first try um, from Rovovo, uh, it was an incredible try. And uh, but Ireland, yeah, o- underwhelming was the word I heard used at the press conference, and, and that's the way it felt. When you were in with us last Monday, I was questioning how much Andy Farrell would actually read into the A performance against uh, New Zealand Day. That you know, it's a sort of team thrown together, and while individuals may not have stood up, maybe you would have learned certain things. This was obviously different because he did put out an awful lot of front line players, like the fact that Tyke Furlong was captaining the team, uh, Robbie Henshaw back in and fit again, Jameson Gibson Park getting the start. Were there players who will feel they've really missed an opportunity a year away from the World Cup that may not get that opportunity again? No, I think I don't think they'll be be harshly judged. I think they'll be frustrated and they'll be honest with the, with the performance. Um, obviously, the more regular starters, I think there was probably six or seven of them, though, wasn't there? Um, nine changes from the the starting team against South Africa, so that's that's a good bit of change. And basically, what you got is that bit of rust that. Sometimes um, you get at the start of the Six Nations with international teams, or in these periods um, of November internationals, because you know they haven't played games for a while together. They just have a short training block of maybe um, a week and a half, two weeks to get ready. So you're always uh, nervous and and sceptical about how you'll hit the ground running. So Ireland, obviously, with the with the team against South Africa. Um, hit the ground running last week, and they were they were really sharp in in most things. Still, a couple of things that they could be better at, uh, but this team weren't able to do it. And that sometimes that comes down to experience and and obviously a bit of quality as well and confidence. Probably confidence is something we, um, that's associated with this because you know it's a big it's a big stage for a number of players and um, you know so I wouldn't be kind of failing anybody as regards the test um, I just think collectively they were a little bit off that and for some of the players who probably played in the A game as well this as you say was an opportunity and um, Nick Timoney played well Treadwell played well um, Jeremy Lockman did well um, you know but nobody kind of uh, really kind of caught the eye to the point that you'd say, God, they've got to be on the team now against Australia. They have to be. You have to put them in there. So um, one of those ones that was just a little bit frustrating, I think the one o'clock kickoff as well and the crowd really, you know, the I think it, it kind of always frustrated me as a player that, you know, you've you, you, there's an expectation that you've got to give the crowd something to get them going. It's probably a fact, but... I think the crowd have got to play their part as well. And um, there was a bit of a jovial atmosphere before the game and um, not, 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 uh, and that expectation was probably in the crowd. So they never really got going either. So it was, it, and look, the nature of the game was so stop start. What are you grinning about? Ah, come on, it's an international test match. It's one o'clock. Surely it shouldn't matter that much what time it starts. Just be up for it. Some of these lads, it's one of the yeah. biggest games of their career. Ah, well, I would have played better if it was 8 o'clock on the Saturday evening, lads. Wasn't there also, like, just to take on your point, Quinny, about the 
So, like, look, everybody leaves it. It was a bit of a flat game. It was very stop-start. There was a lot of fairly Irish-strewn, which didn't... Like, the Mexican wave kicks in and everybody's sort of slightly distracted by all that nonsense. But, like, if you're Andy Farrell stepping away from it, you mentioned three names earlier on, Timoney, um, Lockman, uh, Treadwell, and maybe include Jimmy O'Brien with another uh, bunch of full test minutes under his belt. Like, when you step away from all that in terms of maybe not, like, starting World Cup players, but certainly in terms of a 23 or a World Cup squad... The likes of Timoney now is starting to put his name down as a starting to put his hand up as a I'm I'm here put me in. Well, he has done for the last couple of years, and just on on uh, I, I agree with Nathan. You know, you have to be up for these games, these one o'clock games. I'm not saying that's an excuse. I'm just saying it didn't help with the crowd and stuff like that. That you know that they weren't kind of pumping for a half five kickoff. Um, we often give out about. Uh, a lot of people give out about um, you know the alcohol situation in the Aviva and people in and out for drinks and and stuff. But um, well, you were the one that started so, all that, Quinny, of course. I did, yeah, yeah, I did many years ago, and and it is frustrating. But um, you know, I'm just saying that when that when a game becomes very stop start, and it is that early, I think it's just flat. People are expecting something to happen, and and you know, I played in those games, those one o'clock games away in France where it's it's you're, you're away with no fans, maybe a very small number of fans over there. Um, so it is, you've got it. And I, I, I totally get the point that Nathan is saying. You have to generate your own kind of emotion and your own uh, being up for it. Um, but, and Ireland didn't do that for some reasons, but it can happen in sports, you know, things start to go wrong and um, the opposition obviously <laughs> made it difficult. They were very ill-disciplined, um, they were very competitive, which sometimes you don't expect them to be so aggressive at the breakdown and trying to turn the ball over. Um, and uh, they give away a lot of penalties. So there was a lot of stop start to it. But um, I think if you look at if you look at where Ireland are at the moment, I think they're trying to develop that depth. And, um, you know, Timoney has been in the mix for the last kind of two, two and a half years, three years. And he's a very good player, plays very well for Ulster. The step up sometimes, um, it takes a little bit of time for players to get used to it. He's well able for the physicality. I think he and Prendergast coming off the bench as well was was an important one. And Jack Crowley. So there's lo- there's there's po- always positives in um, and they won the game. They scored five tries. I think Ireland played to their strengths with um, and had to do that. I think I was hoping for probably the last twenty minutes, twenty five minutes of that second half that Ireland would start to click a little bit more. And, you know, get a few tries and 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 stretch out the scoreboard a little bit, but it didn't happen. But um, if you're South Africa and you look at their A team being beaten by Munster last week, um, are they in a worse position than we are? You know, we you know this team beat beat Fiji and uh, it wasn't a great performance. But um, again, it's something to not get too too concerned about. I think when you make that many ga- uh, changes in, in a team. Um, but I do think when they look at this harshly, and I like the fact that Andy Farrell was pretty honest and tight furlough when they came out, I think they'll 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 judge themselves pretty harshly here um, and, and try and fix situations and uh, particularly their, their, their accuracy when they got in uh, into the Fiji in 22. Too many times they kind of turned the ball over or, or gave poor passes. So, um, yeah, it was um, one of those games that uh, it was difficult probably to watch for people. At the back row is also always going to be a position where there's a, a lot of depth and Nick Timoney seems to have done himself no harm at all over the last couple of weeks. Jack Conan, where is he in his career right now? He comes back from the lines. You expect him to kick on from there, been a starting line. I know he's had a lot of injuries, uh, but it does feel as though he probably hasn't had the boost and the bounce out of that that you would have expected yeah and it happens uh, Nathan it can happen players who go away in the Lions tour um, sometimes it's it's that kind of incredible high and um, you've got to find that bit of form again that bit of hunger um, maybe push yourself a little bit harder so I'm not saying that, that Jack Conner is not pushing himself but it, it can happen players you know David Wallace was on a, a Lions tour in 2001 in Australia and he came back and you know couple of months two months after he's, he was playing with Gary Owen for for a couple of months because um, he wasn't getting picked for Munster I think Dennis Leamy came on the scene and it can happen players um, it's hard for players to to kind of keep that high consistently uh, and that's what makes 
makes the challenge of that difficult. So, obviously, Peter Romani's form um, in the in the in the latter part of the Six Nations, what he brings in the lineout to that Irish lineout, particularly with winning the ball, but also pressure on the opposition defence. Um, it kind of pushed Jack Conan to to, uh, to 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 the bench really, and w- w- being respectful to Jack Conan, I think uh, uh, to both players, I think Jack Conan coming off the bench probably brings that bit of um, energy and and kind of ball carrying ability. That's probably where his strength is over Peters, and Peters is obviously at the breakdown in the lineout. Um, so he's kind of got himself pigeonholed into that that bench spot. Um, he won't be pleased with that, um, and you know, again, Saturday is a, is a game that's you know, in in games like last Saturday, players have got to really get a nine or out of ten performance to really catch the eye. Nobody really did uh, get that performance that would say this guy deserves and needs to be put back on the, on the senior team. So. Um, they have another chance next week, and obviously you've got to play consistently well with your perform with your province. But um, and it's not a case of Jack Conan; his performances have dropped back to a to an alarming level. It, they haven't. I think he admitted he had a dip in the form last year himself. I still think he's um, still playing at a very high level and still a very important part of that twenty three. Uh, Joey Carberry got the start, and there was a lot of experience around him as well. Did Andy Farrell try and have Ireland playing differently with with Carberry at ten as compared to Sexton, or was he trying to get him to do Sexton like things? I don't think he was trying to get him to do anything different. I think it's down to the individuals and their strengths, and uh, probably, you know, obviously it's well documented how d- that dominance and confidence that Johnny Sexton has, and that ability to drive people around him. Joey's Carberry's not as vocal. Um, I still think. This is probably more of a, an area from my cat in the attack, um, and there's different personnel there. Sorry, Robbie Henshaw just on the him not being vocal because I think you touched on this earlier as well, Adrian. It was, it was obviously quite maybe noticeable, and maybe you just zone in on it so much with Sexton because it's non-stop. Is that something he needs to work on? Probably, and it's look, it's it's being vocal is probably something that's uh, taken out of context a bit I think it's his body language Johnny Sexton it's so on it all the time and he's so involved and that's the type of character he is um, obviously Joey Carberry he's, he's talking to players around him calling moves stuff like that you have to as a fly half but I just think it may be the body language and stuff like that but they're not like that I think they, they're not like for like um, in the way they play either um, Sexton is so confrontational with his carries and Joey Carberry did, um, you know, the the cohesion of of um, that you would like wasn't there at times. And and Fiji were shooting players out of the line. Um, I think the concern again, Nathan, is the attack when, and this is probably jumping forward when when they were down to thirteen players. Um, okay, Mac Hansen gets to try, but I just didn't think we sh- when we looked like a team that really looked up and knew where the space was and didn't didn't. Uh, capitalising that but um, again it's one of those ones that uh, we're kind of talking about Joey Carberry and saying that um, you know you'd love this dominant pack in front of him and him being really really dominant Um, but Ireland didn't get those kind of outcomes that they wanted from the game on Saturday Um, the the, the only kind of scenario that that was never in doubt was the result really Um, there was no real I suppose when there was one score in it um, in that second half, yeah, people were saying you want to kick on and get the next couple of scores and it never really materialised. So obviously he got a big knock as well, Joey Carberry. So whether he'll be on the bench or available next week because um, he would have had a a head injury assessment as well. So um, not a great outcome there for him. But I think, could you find fault in his performance? Probably a little bit. I, I, I... and it look, it was down. It was probably the same as every player. They looked a bit flat. They looked a little bit lethargic, and I don't know why. And Andy Farrell didn't know why after the game. But sometimes that happens with sporting teams, and um, maybe lacked a little bit of leadership to grab hold of the thing and kind of get that spark on. It never really happened for all the players. 
Uh, Quinny, we have two comments in here on YouTube that I want to bring you by way of the next topic in relation to uh, South Africa. LB saying, uh, South African viewer, and good morning to you. Boxer in a great position, lost to the top two sides by a score away from home while it's not necessarily playing to our potential. Much more to come from the box. And then Danny Mack says, uh, South Africa, my favourites of the World Cup, major depth to their squad. What's uh, What with the French technology um, uh, for a decision that went against them? So the Razzy Erasmus stuff, I don't know if you've been uh, following that on Twitter, but he's been back out again and he's had more stuff to say is he there's two sides to it is he like is he right I suppose number one is he should, is this exactly what he should be doing out sort of getting in front of the message and, and putting across that South African side or is he beginning to lose the respect of the international rugby fraternity I think if you look at the comments online Adrian he's starting to lose the, lose the public a little bit um even some South Africans, and uh, I, I found that interesting that they were well, not turning on him, but don't agree that it, I think it's too a little bit too much. There was a number of videos again after the game in France at the weekend. I just think it's a bit of a, as I said to you many times, many many parts. One side of me really thinks this is is great, and I love the the charisma and the 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 character and. Um, but I just think he's pushing it a little bit now and he's going to get himself in trouble again. Yeah. He's probably heaping more pressure, actually. This is going to start having a negative effect on his team now because I think referees um, will start to really kind of circle the wagons themselves and try and protect and help each other. There's always a couple of decisions in every game that you could highlight. And I think he's just got to be careful now. I think at the weekend, there was a lot. And... Maybe he's just better off come out, say it, and say, I think this decision is wrong, this decision is wrong, this decision is wrong. It's been put in a way that's a bit... Um, it's like it's given a compliment to the opposition and the crowd and stuff, but um, uh, we've no excuses. And then the video's there, so... Uh, is he kind of undermining Jack Nienabar and, and Felix Jones and the coaches in some way? Well, he's, uh, he's the boss. Razzie's the boss. That's the reality of it. Um, so... Um, who's he, who's made, he speaking to? Do you think when he's putting that stuff out, like who, who is he trying? What's the, oh, they, they, what's the I point? I think they're, they 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 probably all can see and know what's happening. He's not sitting, right? He's not sitting in his room doing it on his own. Um, Somebody's cutting the video for him, and it's all. Yeah, I just think that it's uh, look. I, I um I just think that it could backfire a little bit. It could. I'm not saying it will. Um, I think one of the comments came in there from the, the was it a South African? Um, person there talking about South Africa and I, I, I kind of agree with what yeah. they're saying about physically being in, uh, you know very dominant um, not not very dominant against Ireland but really um, they could take a lot out of that loss um, again against France going down to 14 men um, I thought they played and when they had to play and uh, dare I say it if South Africa actually uh, back back their attacking game um they, for me, they will be the favourites and will win the World Cup. Um, they have so much strength and power and they're so well coached, um, defensively so hard to break down. And that game Saturday night was was incredible um, and could easily have won it. I think they, they did put France under a lot of pressure. But, you know, South Africa have got a fair bit of criticism um, at times with their direct approach and, and their kicking game. But... Um, France have kind of slipped in on, under the radar as probably world, potential World Cup champions here who kick the letter off the ball. You know, they don't play around with it in their own half. Um, they get into that kick tennis situation a lot. And we saw that last year in the Six Nations and they were very successful at it. And it's difficult at times. So I think the team that's going to win the World Cup is going to, going to have to add some attack to that, you know, to uh, a number of performances. And obviously... Um, we saw a different side to South Africa's game on Saturday night because they had to, they're particularly their counter-attack, and they look very, very dangerous. So I think they could feel a little bit aggrieved with one or two things. Um, the yellow card for Dean Fury was a big turning point because obviously France scored off that and, and South Africa went down to 13 men. Um, and that did open up a bit of space and, and, and change the momentum of the game. But... Uh, yeah, going back to Rassi, I, I just think maybe one video would have been enough, but there was yeah. a number of them, wasn't there, after Saturday night? At the game of the weekend, 
the World Cup final on Saturday morning. I don't know if you saw this. 11 tries. Uh, New Zealand beat England 34-31. England 14-0 up after the first quarter. Get a player sent off. Uh, have a chance to win it right at the end. Kick to the corner. Uh, I think they scored. Was it 26 of the last 34 tries was from Rolling Mall. They think, this is us. We're about to win it. And New Zealand steal the line out. It was unbelievable. Did you see any of it, Quinny? Um, I didn't. I was, I was uh, keeping Prepping. an eye on Italy. Yeah, I was, and um, we were down to the stadium pretty early. Italy and Australia, that that was an incredible result for Italy. They, um, you know, we're obviously playing Australia on Saturday night, but I didn't see see the rugby league stuff. But, um, you know, to see the scenes in, uh, for Italy, you know, they've beaten Wales, Samoa and Australia in the last three games. So, um Back in the Six Nations, obviously, when they beat Wales right at the end, the last game, it was, uh, I think they're kind of building a little bit nicely, and it's nice to see that. Um, but that game the other on Saturday was was outstanding. They beat Australia 28-27. Uh, just before you go, Quinny, uh, some very sad news out of Munster over the weekend uh, with the passing of Jerry Holland, just 66. Uh, a real pivotal figure in the history of Munster rugby as a player, as a coach, as a team manager. Was was there for some of your best ever days? Yeah, it's very sad. And uh, Jerry had an illness for a couple of years. And um, obviously, in, in in the last short period of time, it, it, it got worse and it got serious for him. And... Um, you know, it's it's incredible. You think of Paul McNaughton last week, someone who was uh, manager of Ireland when I was there as well, and and very very popular with 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 all the Irish players when he was involved with Ireland, particularly that Grand Slam winning team, and uh, Jerry Holland. Um, so many fond memories of Jerry. He was a, a real kind of players manager. He got on so well with everyone. Uh, people were uh, respected him a lot and. He had fun and, and and the crack with us as well, but we knew not to cross Jerry, you know. And he was he was a brilliant part of our setup for for many years. And so many of the players are are kind of shocked and and saddened by that. And um, he's obviously Billy's dad as well, so it's a it's a very difficult situation for the Holland family. And uh, um, Jerry was such great fun. He was he was a a joy to meet up with when you went into the squad. He wasn't a manager that you were trying to avoid he was someone that we had great respect for and the players loved him we actually loved him he was uh when i went into munster first of all and i i, I played for munster in 96 they gave us contracts in 97 jerry was the manager and i didn't have a lot of bobs i was just out of um you know giving up my job and i was tra- we were traveling up and down to cork and in and out to limerick training in different camps and uh after a couple of months of, of of being together, I put in a hefty expenses bill for 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 mileage to Cork, and uh, Jerry kind of pulled me aside um, after a couple of months, and he said, "Look, I, I, your expenses came in there. I just wanted to have a chat about about them with you." And uh, I remember thinking, um, "God, did I get did I?" I said to Jerry, "Did I get him wrong? Did I kind of put in too much or?" Or should I put in more or are the numbers wrong? And he said, listen, there's only one small problem. He said, um, you're putting in uh, mileage to, for driving to Cork. And uh, just so you know, Quinny, you don't have a car. Uh, <laughs> so I didn't actually have a car. And he, he passed the expenses anyway. And I remember thinking, God, he's sound. He's sound out. He's brilliant. Uh, so I got the few bob for the expenses. And I was, I, I was getting a lift to Cork with Johnny Lacey. Uh, the two of us used to travel down. Johnny had a company car, but um, it was many great nights out. But like, if you crossed Jerry, then you were in trouble. Um, he was big on on kind of discipline off the field as well, and how we how we behaved when we were away in hotels and different trips, going through airports, all that stuff. Um, but he loved to have a few points with the team as well, and he was just great fun. And it, it is obviously very very sad, and uh, it's going to be a tough couple of days for for the family and um, he was a very popular man yeah sympathies to all the Holland family Quinny great stuff as always thanks lads